الله عليه وسلم سأل شهر رمضان شهر أوله رحمة وأوسطه مغفرة وآخره إتق من النار. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the month of Ramadan is a month where the beginning part of it is mercy, the middle part of it is forgiveness, and the latter part of it is freedom or safety from or being freed from the hellfire. If we look at each of these three elements, forgiveness, mercy, and freedom from the hellfire, you'll find that these same three elements are things that we find even in our own human experience. And our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our relationship with one another, is just an extension of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning the same things that we seek from Allah, we achieve those things by extending them to one another. So let's just look at forgiveness. If you want forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the quickest way to earn that is to extend forgiveness to other human beings. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yuftahu abwaabu al-jannah fi kulli ithnain wa khamis. Fi kulli yawm al-ithnain wa khamis. Wa yughfar li kulli abdin musliman la yushrik billahi shay'an illa rajulain. Illa rajulain kanat baynahuma shahna. Fa yuqalu, ya'ni lil malaika, anziru hadayni hatta yastaliha. يعني يغفر بعضهم بعضا أنظر هذين حتى يصطلحا أنظر هذين حتى يصطلحا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the gates of paradise are open outside of Ramadan because we, we know inside of Ramadan the gates of paradise are open until Ramadan is finished every day Outside of Ramadan, the gates of paradise are open on every Monday and every Thursday. And every Muslim servant who does not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be forgiven. With the exception of two people. Who have some animosity, some hatred, some problems between them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, أَنْذِرُوا هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَصْطَلِحَا Hold off on those two until they reconcile what is between them. Hold off on those two until they reconcile what is between them. Hold off on those two until they reconcile what is between them. Meaning, all of the Muslim servants who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and do not associate partners with them, on every Monday and Thursday they will be forgiven from the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They earn that. With the exception of two people who refuse to forgive one another, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will withhold his forgiveness from them until they learn how to forgive one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not extend that to you until you reconcile what is between you and your brother. And the point behind this is that if we do not know how to be generous with our forgiveness with one another, then we can't possibly appreciate the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our extent, our relationship with one another is an extension of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't know how to extend forgiveness to someone else, how can you possibly appreciate the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You, you might be, you know, makhroor. You might be someone who's deceived. Allah extends his forgiveness to you and you continue sinning because you don't appreciate the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this maidan, this grounds that we are in, this breeding ground that we're in now, this is a training grounds for training for us to learn how to appreciate the qualities that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from. Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, كَانَ بَيْنَ أَبِي بَكَرْ وَعُمَرْ مُحَاوَرَةً فَأَغْضَبَ أَبُو بَكَرْ عُمَرْ فَانْصَرَفَ عَنْهُ فأتبعه أبو بكر وهو ويطلب منه أن يغفر له فلم يفعل عمر حتى أغلق بابه في وجهه فأقبل أبو بكر إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله 
إني كان بيني وبين ابن الخطاب شيء فأسرعت إليه ثم ندمت فسألته أن يغفر لي فأبى علي فأقبلت إليك فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يغفر الله لك يا أبا بكر يغفر الله لك يا أبا بكر يغفر الله لك يا أبا بكر ثم ندم عمر على ما كان منه فأتى منزل أبي بكر فسأل أثم أبا بكر فقالوا لا ثم أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فجعل عليه الصلاة والسلام وجهه يتمعر يعني إحمر حتى أشفق أبو بكر فجث على ركبتي فقال يا رسول الله إني والله كنت أظلم قال يا رسول الله إني والله كنت أظلم فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما جلس عنده عمر فتحول عنه ثم جلس عمر إلى جانب الآخر فأعرض عنه ثم قام عمر فجلس بين يديه فأعرض عنه فقال عمر يا رسول الله ما أرى إعراضك عني إلا لشيء بلغك عني فما خير في الحياة وأنت معرض عني فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عمر أنت الذي اعتذر عندك أخوك فلم تقبل منه يسألك أخوك أن يغفر له ولم تفعل that Abu Darda رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that there was some arguing between Abu Bakr and Umar showing you that even amongst the best of, of this ummah they had their disagreements they had their disagreements our problem is not conflict our problem is conflict management knowing how to manage conflict with our hearts still being intact with one another. We don't separate in our hearts even if we separate in our bodies. Even if we separate from one another, fil jism, la natafarraq fil qulub. But we don't separate in our hearts. He says, so there was some disagreement between Abu Bakr and Umar, and Abu Bakr said something that made Umar upset. And Umar turned around and began to walk away. Abu Bakr feels sorry for what he said and he began to follow Umar asking him, Umar forgive me. Umar turned away from him and closed his door in the face of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr felt bad. So he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, oh Messenger of Allah, there was something between me and Ibn Khattab and I made him angry and upset and then I felt bad about it and then I went and I asked him for forgiveness but he refused to forgive me. He refused to forgive me. The Prophet وسلم, as it was with his companions, he was always there to lift them up, always there when they felt down to pick them back up. He said, may Allah forgive you, Abu Bakr. May Allah forgive you, Abu Bakr. May Allah forgive you, Abu Bakr. And then Umar felt bad that he refused to accept his forgiveness. So he went to the house of Abu Bakr and he said, is Abu Bakr home? They said, no, he's not here. So, uh, so Umar went to the Prophet Sallallahu and when Abu Bakr saw Umar approaching, he fell down to his knees and he grabbed the, the thobe of the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I was the one that was wrong. I was the one, that, Wallahi, I was the one that wronged him. He was in fear that the Prophet Sallallahu was going to scold Umar for not accepting his forgiveness. So he wanted to make it clear before Umar even reached him that I was the one that was wrong, O Messenger of Allah. I was wrong. And when Umar approached, the Prophet Sallallahu turned his back to him. Just as Umar turned his back to Abu Bakr. Just as you do to people, so shall it be done to you. You turn your back to someone, then when you need someone else, they're going to turn their backs on you. So when Umar approached, the Prophet Sallallahu turned his back to him. And then Umar came around to the other side and the Prophet turned his back again. Then Umar came in front of him and he turned his back again. And he said, oh Messenger of Allah, I only see you're turning away from me because of something that reached you about me. He said, Wallahi, there's no good. La khayrun fi hayat wa anta mu'ridun anni. There's no good in life if you turn away from me. Meaning, what is there left of my life if my Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, turns his back on me? There's no good in life. 
And this is the same one that Umar عنه, said to him, لَأَنْتَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَحَبِّ النَّاسِ إِلَيَّ إِلَّا مِنْ نَفْسِي O oh, Messenger of Allah, you are more beloved to me than everybody in this dunya with the exception of myself. The Prophet وسلم, said, لا يا Umar حتى من نفسك no, Umar, you will not have complete Iman until you love me even more than you love yourself. So Umar began to think, Man ana fi maqabil in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who am I to put myself in comparison with the Messenger of Allah when he stands up at night to his feet bleeds, to his feet begins to crack and bleed, praying for my forgiveness, praying for my salvation, praying for the success of this Ummah. Who am I to compare myself to him? Who am I when he was the same one who went into sujood and pig intestines was poured on his back? He was praying in the salah and he was choked from behind. So Abu Bakr had to push the man off of him and say to him, Ataqtulu rajulan an yuqulu rabbi Allah? Will you kill a man simply because he says Allah is my Lord? And all of the trials and tribulations that he endured for our salvation, for our forgiveness. He was called a liar, sahirun kadhab, kadhabun ashir. He was called a liar, a magician, majnoon, insane, all of these things. Who am I to compare myself to the Messenger of Allah? After he thought about this, he went back and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, la anta ahab bin nas ilayya hatta min nafsi. Faqala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al an ya Umar, al an, ya'ni qad istakmala imanuk. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you are more beloved to me than anyone and everything in this dunya, including myself. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Now you have completed your faith, Umar. So he said to the Prophet Sallallahu There's no good in my life if you turn your back on me. The Prophet Sallallahu said to him, He said, Are you the one who your brother came to you asking for forgiveness and you refused to give it to him? Yes, Aluka Akhuka and Yaghfir Lahu Walam Taqbal. Your brother came to you asking you for forgiveness and you refused to give it to him? SubhanAllah How could you expect to receive forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you don't extend forgiveness to other people? We hold on to resentment. We hold on to these things because we believe that that would bring validation to our emotions, to our feelings. Someone offended me. Someone wronged me. So as long as I dislike you, my feelings are valid. Because the moment I forgive you, then that means that all of my feelings that I have are gone with the wind. They're out the window. There's no, you know, there's no reward for that. Your validation comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other human being can validate you. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can validate you. But if you refuse to give forgiveness to other people, how can you possibly accept it? From, how can you get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you are not generous with your forgiveness towards other people, how can you appreciate the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So our relationships with one another is an extension of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the other quality which is mercy irham man fil ard yarhamakum man fil sama have mercy on those that are on the earth and the one that is above the heavens will have mercy on you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man la yarham la yurham he who does not show mercy to other people will not be shown mercy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kama tudinu tudan just as you deal with other people, so shall you be dealt with. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness in this month. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy in this month. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free our necks from the hellfire during this month. For in the wali yudarika wa qadirun ala kulli shayin. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and taslim and kithira. Wa subhanaka rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.